Hey everyone, it's Myra. Thanks for joining me. The new toys are here, so let's get going. <laughs> There she is, the Breville Smart Oven Air. This thing is a beast. It's gonna be replacing my Oster Toaster Oven. So let's go over this quickly. We're gonna unbox it. First things first, on the top of this, we got the bottom uh, catch or drip tray, whatever you wanna call it. We got the two racks are in here, uh, and the, I guess a pizza tray. My Oster will do like a 12 inch pizza. Okay, this is one piece solid packaging. And the only way I know to get this out of here without destroying everything is to flip the box. So let's do that. I'm one of those people who like to keep my boxes for a little bit and I don't want to destroy it in case there's something wrong and I have to return it. So this nice coffee table here. Sometimes when you lift it, it start flying all over. Okay, on one side we have a little tray. It looks like it's uh, in a tray for a basket or something. Yep, and I was right. Here's that basket. This sits in here. This is uh, probably good for roasting the turkey. I hear this will do uh, like a, or bird of any type. 14 pounds. For comparison, my GoWise USA 5.8 quart, I can safely fit about a five pound turkey or chicken, give or take. Okay, that looks like it for the loose parts. I'm gonna cut off some tape. Thanks, Dave. I'll tell you, it's like Christmas. Okay, and off to this side, there's another basket tray. Uh, this I could see putting maybe uh, fries or any anything for that matter, chicken on there, and uh, let it drop into the drip tray. While we're talking about the drip tray, I've read that some people uh, will get the drip tray and do cut to fit silicone so that uh, it's always easier to clean. Now I kept holding off on buying this thing because everything online said, you know, 27 inches wide or something like that. And that just didn't make sense to me. And uh, when I went to the store and saw it, saw it, the tag on it said 27 inches wide. And I always carried a tape measure in my pocket. And when I measured it, it was not the case. And the reason why I say that is the box isn't even 27 inches wide. So this we have a 21 by 13 and a half deep with the handle. It comes up to just over, just under 16. And the height is uh, about 11, excuse me, 12 and a half inches. So it's by no means a small device. So uh, let's see what this is gonna end up in the kitchen. So just to give you a layout of my very small kitchen here, um, you have the GoWise USA fryer here. It, this is where it goes when it's not in use. When it's in use, I sit it on this built-in hot plate. And uh, people have asked about this. The previous owner had this uh, laminate countertop put in. He had a, a hole cut in it and recessed nine tiles in it. It's kind of ingenious. I've never seen this before. I've never been in a billion homes. But uh, it's the first time I've seen something like this because the air fryers get really hot and they've been known to crack corian and uh, quartz. I've heard that uh, granite is okay, but it can stain or burn granite. I don't know. I don't own it. This is my Oster toaster oven. This thing claims it'll do six slices of toast. The Breville claims it'll do six slices. I, well, in some cases, nine. But uh, this doesn't do six pieces of toast. Maybe like six halves of English muffins or something. This is my uh, flip Belgium waffle maker. This is actually pretty cool. Maybe I'll do something on that quick. And the coffee maker. I don't drink coffee. That's for my wife. So uh, we're going to start uh, doing it. We're going to start by taking out the toaster oven. In all my other videos, you may have noticed always behind the toaster oven, there's a huge box of uh, equal for my wife's coffee. I said to her last week for the, this has now been there for nine years. I says, can we take the box out and just, you know, have you refill this thing every, you know, few weeks or whatever. That gives up a little bit of counter space back. So I'm going to just clean everything down here. He cooks, he cleans, he does windows and bathrooms. Yeah, 
If you've ever been curious in my videos, um, you'll notice, let me get this out of the way, I have an outlet back there. That is a dedicated 15 amp outlet. It's the only thing that runs off this outlet is just this one plug or this uh, breaker. So um, behind here, I have a uh, short power cord, an extension cord that the coffee maker and the toaster oven get plugged into because the coffee maker won't reach on its own. And uh, I've been able to successfully, without an issue, run the toaster oven and the air fryer at the same time. It's probably teetering on the edge of not being okay. If I was to turn on the coffee maker, I'm sure I'd trip the breaker. However, um, you know, when I'm making something in the air fryer and I need to toast up some bread or something, uh, that's it. Now, obviously, I can't run the Breville and the toaster oven or the Breville and the air fryer at once. However, behind the stove, there is an outlet. This is an electric stove, so it's got a dedicated 240 volt outlet, but there is a, a 120 volt outlet behind there. And that's if you had gas in this house. I tried to get gas in here once. I couldn't get anybody to run it because it was a too small of a job. Now they're begging for the job. This outlet only runs one other place in the bathroom. Um, so the bathroom and this outlet are on the same circuit, dedicated 15 amp circuit. And the only time, uh, you know, that outlet is in use is if, uh, you know, my wife is blow drying her hair or something. So what I did was I had got one of these uh, heavy duty air conditioner power cords and uh, it has a right angle so it's just flat up against the wall and I push the stove up against it and uh, I will plug probably the Breville in here that way I can leave the um, outlet here dedicated for when I want to use the air fryer or vice versa it really doesn't matter I just realized I'm cutting my head off um, so let's keep going I'll still probably need to leave this extension cord for the coffee maker because it's just simply not long enough. Here we go. That thing is a beast. While we're at it, let's do a comparison between this and the Oster. This is actually pretty cool. The outlet itself has a little hole in it. Um, this is so you can put your finger in and pull it out. You should never unplug the power cord just by pulling from the cord. We all do it. I do it sometimes, but uh, this is cool. Just put it in there and pull it out. So here we have comparing the two. The Breville, again, is about 21 and a half wide. This toaster oven is about 17 and a half. The Breville is about uh, 12 and a quarter high. The toaster oven is about 10 and a quarter high. As far as depth goes, uh, with the handle, about 13 and a half on the toaster oven and 14 with the handle on the Breville. That being said, you still need to leave room behind the appliance. So when I use the toaster oven, I pull this out, and from the back, for instance, on the toaster oven, it has this little pop out here, so you can't push it against the wall. And that's a common problem with the air fryer. You don't realize that's a common problem with the air fryer. You can't push those things against the wall when they're used. They generate too much heat. Um, so let's keep going. I would love to plug the Breville straight in to this outlet. The problem is, is the coffee maker needs to plug in too. And I do not want to plug the Breville into this expansion cord. Um, so I'm going to have to think about that. I wish this was a four gang outlet. That way I could do it. So I think I'm going to have to go with my original plan and pull off this plastic protective cap and plug the Breville in here. Now I am going to unplug it again just so we can go over a few things. Now I am by no means know the Breville well. Um, I'm just unboxing it. I read a couple of things about it. What I do know is that um, there's a somewhat of a break-in you have to do for this. Basically you're going to take a, a wet sponge or a paper towel or whatever, not soaking wet, just damp, and you need to wipe everything down. Don't touch the quartz elements or anything, but you know, get some of the grease and dust and whatever out of here. Once you do that, they want you to run a full pizza cycle. And what that will do is burn off any of the residual oils that might be on it. So that's the, really the first step we have to do here. So let's uh, start taking off some of these things here. I really want to leave that there, that looks cool.
going to do the wipe down, going to start the pizza cycle, and then I'm going to clean the racks and everything that came with this. Okay, let's get this plugged back in. Okay, nice bright display. So let's uh, click this down to pizza. So we got a toast, bagel, I'm really not sure why you need two settings for that. Broil, bake, roast, warm, pizza, which is what we'll do the burning period for. Proof, proof is uh, if you're making your own dough, I have a nice KitchenAid convection oven uh, that does bread proofing among other things um, and has special settings, all that happy stuff, yada yada. Uh, air fry, yeah, we're gonna do something with that. Uh, reheat cookies okay so I assume for cookies it's probably like a standard convection mode uh, slow cook so uh, if you have one of those nice uh, crock pot bowl type bowls uh, you could do slow cooking and dehydrate I've never done dehydrate uh, my gadget kitchen did some I believe with the Breville so you can go check out her page for that um, and let's go back to pizza it says 375 for 20 minutes and we'll hit start and I did pull that forward it may not look at too much in the video but that's kind of an important thing may rearrange the countertop a little bit but uh, we'll be back in 20 minutes after this thing is uh, all warmed up a couple of things I want to mention uh, we're still in the burn-in phase here if you open this door the timer stops and blinks to warn you the oven light turns on I notice the oven light won't turn back off. Maybe it will after a minute or something, but there's an oven light here. Turn that off. And there's a few more buttons. Uh, fan button, which is, I assume, convection. Uh, phase cook. I don't know what that means yet. And uh, a frozen button, which is a pizza. So this is assuming it's a frozen pizza. I have made fresh pizzas before, you know, made my dough and everything. So I'll have to look into that. And at the bottom is the Celsius Fahrenheit. A couple other things, you got these uh, settings, shelf settings, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One and two are for broil, steaks, I guess. Uh, three and four are for air fryer, dehydrate, and toast and bagel. Positions five and six are for cookies and bake and roast, so I'll be looking forward to cooking my first bird in here soon. Uh, seven for pizza and eight for slow cook. And uh, two reasons, I assume, eight is for slow cook. One is usually those bowls or containers are really big and uh, you know it really needs to be able to fit in there so the burn-in is just about complete oh and the light came on as soon as it uh, was about what 10 seconds left to go what a nice oven you can hear everything pouring down now my toaster oven didn't get too hot in the back there's a lot of heat coming out of the back uh, when I did a quick read through the manual, they said make sure there's six inches above, which uh, is about that, but I'm pulling it forward. I think it was like four inches on the side, but I'll be pulling this out, so it's not as big as a deal. So let's open this bad boy up. I, you can still hear the fan running, so it's going to be continuing to cook, so it's not going to let the heat stay just dead in one spot, and also help cool down the unit afterwards. So let's get some of the shelves back in there to see how they uh, look. One of the other cool things I saw when I was in the store about this is actually magnet on the door. So when you close this door and you open it, it pulls out that shelf a little. Cool, huh? It's a simple things. A little warning here. Do not use with foods that drip while cooking. Not quite sure what they mean by that. Um, I guess air frying, you don't really use oil, so maybe it's not an issue. The roast pan itself, I'm not going to be leaving in there. Like my toaster oven, I just left it on the top and used it when I needed to. Um, so this I will most likely leave on top. And my sieve, that still fits. Thank God. Put that underneath, I pull it out, I'll uh, remove it for cooking. And of course we got the pizza. There is a uh, round cut out in the back of the oven since pizza gets done and since pizza gets done in number seven whenever we cook pizza we would stick this in like that and it would go in and uh 
I made a comment not too long ago about this should be facing up uh, so you can easily take your food off but I'm realizing in some cases you can't you all actually have to flip this thing over so that you can use the number two position it talks about which is interesting um, position one and two is for broil so maybe that won't matter the toast and the bagel well that's another thing so that's it for part one of the unboxing of the Breville Smart Oven Air. Uh, on the part two, we're going to actually go through and start cooking things. We're going to have a little competition like I did in my first food video. We're going to be cooking fries and maybe some chicken in the oven, in the air fryer, and in the Breville. And uh, I got another little to new toy we're going to be breaking out for that. So thanks for joining me. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing, and I'll see you on the next one.